That's why I think we can put it
and when you end a live stream for example you can show me where you give me a
crop don't go you need your flower I have been my number there for the moment. I think you have a couple of times. I don't know if you have a couple of times. I don't know if you have a couple of times. I don't know if you have a couple of times. I don't know if you have a couple of times. Thank you. 
no secret I'm pretty chilled laid back down to earth well laid back doesn't mean I'm not driven we all have our why for me it's simple I love the game and I love what I can give back because of it this is what keeps me going so I give it everything that I've got everything people see me as the guy that's always up for a laugh that doesn't mean I'm not serious I've just got my own way of doing things. And it doesn't mean things always go your way, but it's how you react that counts. I prep, I push hard, and I recover. Fueled by Connecticut Sports. And I want to do it with a smile on my face. Or what
Thank you very much. <coughs>
we hereby issue the following further direction. One, all the petitions shall forthwith be dealt with as those in cohort one or cohort two, respectively. Two, court shall pass one to rule 17 of the Constitution of Kenya for protection of rights and fundamental freedoms, practice and procedures, rules 2013, on this own motion, consolidates any other petition to fight to this bench, either into any in fact, this bench into any of the two cohorts. Three, for clarity, the petitions are hereby consolidated under the two cohorts as follows. Petition in cohort number one, Nairobi petition number E522 of 2024, that's the link file. Then we have uh, Nairobi petition number E506 of 2024. Nairobi petition number E509 of 2024. Nairobi petition number E525 of 2024. Nairobi petition number E528 of 2024. Nairobi petition number E537 of 2024. And Nairobi petition number E541 of 2024. The petitioners in those consolidated petitions are as follows. One, regarding the Chakwa. Two, Oguli Namea. Three, Kennedy Kamitiu Dachege. Four, Denis Okumu. Five, Simon Muchangi. Six, Peter Maina. Seven, Gemma Watro Association. Eight, John Mugo Kiradu. Nine, Njomu John. Ten, Karen Aluangui Mwangi, 11, Dr. Clarence Efoso Maresa, 12, Wanjiru Mwangi. Those are the petitioners in cohort number one. Respondents in that cohort are one, the Speaker of the National Assembly of Kenya, two, the National Assembly of Kenya, three, the Speaker of the Senate of Kenya, four, the Senate of Kenya, five, the Deputy Speaker, National Assembly, 6. Juan Moses Masika, Tangula, 7. Honorable Amazon King Jeffa, 8. Honorable Attorney General. The interested parties in that cohort are 1. William Samuel Ruto, 2. Law Society of Kenya, 3. Mount Kenya Joyce. That is cohort number 1. Petition in cohort number 2. Nairobi petition number E565 of 2024, that is the file. Nairobi petition E550 of 2024. Nairobi petition E570 of 2024. Nairobi petition E572 of 2024. Kargoya petition E013 of 2024. Kargoya petition E014 of 2024. Kargoya petition number E. 015 of 2024. Um, the petitioners in those cohort two are as follows. H.C. regarding the Chagua, number one, number two, Thomas Kimoto Maingi, number three, John Honjen Jerry Maina, four, or David Nuni Mabege, five, Peter Dichori Kamoto, six, Grace Mdoni Mwangi, seven, Clement Michiri Mureki, 8, Edwin Munane Karyoki, 9, Sharia Mutani Na Shadrach Wambui, uh, 10, Father Edi Waiguru. From time you know that um, uh, Father Edi Waiguru is in the list of E570 of 2024, and they are 32 petitioners. So from Father Eddie Waiguru, we add all the petitioners in that in that petition, which come to 32 and ends with Emma Wato Association. Respondents in the court are as follows: Speaker, National Assembly, National Assembly of Kenya, three, Speaker Senate, four, Senate of Kenya. 
five on attorney general six H.E. William Ruto seven clerk of the National Assembly eight deputy speaker of the National Assembly nine on Mwengi Mpure ten United Democratic Alliance eleven Orange Democratic Alliance twelve Kenya Kwanza Alliance thirteen Ford Kenya Party 14, Amani National Congress, 15, Register of the Political Parties, 16, Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission. In that cover of the interested parties are follows, the Law Society of Kenya, Professor Kipure Kindiki, Waipa Democratic Party, Jubilee Party of Kenya, Katiba Institute, Mount Kenya Jewish Association. And then, let's take the tour the Sharia. First one to those we direct that all filings and service of documents shall be done electronically through the court's electronic portal in the respective court's lead files. Parties shall accordingly ensure that they are duly marked into the system. The Honorable Deputy Register of this commission <coughs> shall assist if need be. Any council or party appearing in these petitions shall, before the start of any court proceedings, record such appearance in the quorum forms that shall be provided by the court assistance in this bench. Those appearing virtually shall as well log in and register their presence through the court assistance. As directed on 23rd of October 2023, any application in either of the cohorts seeking the refusal of the judges in this bench shall be heard today at 2.30 p.m. Those directions can be accessed in this court's electronic platform. Then these directions can be accessed in this court's electronic platform in the respective league files. This court shall give further appropriate directions in the respective cohorts need files as and when necessary. Thank you very much. The, the directions yeah. uh, subject to amendment which has come from, from you will uh, amend it and then upload it. Thank you. I <laughs> know we are guided by the direction of the issue by the court. We, however, have one concern from our side in the laws. A lot of the uh, interim models that were issued in Kerugoya, and in our understanding, from my interpretation, once the file was referred to this court, the order has expired today. That's our understanding. And a lot we are going to seek the court's guidance on the hearing of our application dated the 10th October of course we understand that there is a application today but given the fact my lord that um, our interpretation of the orders would expire on the appointed date which is today when the matter was going to be mentioned our colleagues understanding my lord that the application in the interest in the public interest we prioritize so that we are able to hear the application for setting aside of those orders. In the event, Lord, the orders in question were issued by one judge, the matter has now been referred to a three judge bench. And their matter is problematic, as mentioned by the court. And we we'll pray that in terms, in terms of aligning the hearing, scheduling the applications to be heard in court to but if possible, my lords, we do not want to do anything outside the law. We would request the Lord that we do have today if it's possible because the orders expire today. I think we have further problem. We just want to ask the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I really want to repeat what uh,
Uh, but I just like to indicate that uh, I would not like to be for like uh, Senior Council Professor Tom Ajeda has indicated, but just for completeness of record, there are two applications. There is one by the Honorable Attorney General and one by the National Assembly dated the 18th of October 2024. We are ready to go with that for them as soon as they are ready. We are not looking for kind of permission. That is our Appearing for the Law Society of Kisumu and also for Provide part of the party or interested parties. My Lord, if the orders are to expire today, then that will be at midnight. My Lord, the day is not yet over. We have applications in the afternoon. We are also affected by those orders. And my Lord, I suggest after the applications today, then we can discuss that matter before the court appeals. I thank you, my Lord. My Lord, Mungai on behalf of the petitioners. There are two issues. You can see the senior, the team leader, of Nabokon, which is not with us in the council. That is the first thing that we will deal with it in the afternoon. And as far as we are concerned, uh, the matter is premature at the hearing and termination of that applications for the simple reason that the issue and an order has already been made that will be first dealt with by the court at the ruling of yesterday was the application for recusal. The other matters that led to how we shall deal with the petition and we shall deal with all the applications, including the first application for conservatory orders. Those are matters that uh, as far as uh, we are concerned are supposed to be dealt with by the directions. By this page, if it, it, it continues. The issue, my lord, of a back and forth on what is to be had first, the court has already ruled on that. And I believe we need to stick to that. And I am lamenting that even as we sat here, because we are such a little bit late, there is a work we still need to do with regard to the application for the afternoon. So we would like any other instances <coughs> that is supposed to be done when, for example, Paul Mute is here in the afternoon, it will be brought to the afternoon. But my Lord, on the directions, the actual directions that have been given by the court, there are two, three things actually that we would like our, our reactions on behalf of the petitioners. Number one, my Lord, is that uh, in giving these directions, we are understanding that the directions are being made pursuant to the Mutunga rules, the rules of procedure that are applicable. My Lord, under the rules of procedure that are applicable, a lot of the petitions that were filed before last Friday are the ones that were filed even on Friday last week are maturing their last dates for responses. My Lord, as we sit here, we are yet to receive any substantive responses to all those petitions in either forms from the respondents. And that will have an impact on how soon we can be able to deal with the substantive matters. So my Lord, I would be expecting that as a further direction, everybody would be required also to comply with the Mutunga rules to the full. My Lord, the second issue is that in all the petitions, the subject matter was the impeachment proceedings. The impeachment proceedings was culminating with the impeachment that was done last Thursday and the facts as they happened on Friday. A lot of these petitions would require some amendment so that they, they conform with the last position so that they are not termed as academic. So that my Lord towards that, the petitioners, including the petitions where I'm participating, we had requested formally that we would want three days to ensure that any amendments are carried out. And then uh, the respondents would indicate they have been saying they can do things within a day or two. They will indicate when they, how much time they need to do the responses. Because my Lord, that would assist in ensuring that whichever bench is going to be and determine this matter would be able to give final directions because as we have said, these are iterative directions. And number three 
in order to be able to determine issues for determination. And these are issues that we deal with when we are, when we are doing pre-child. Issues for determinations that are essential in a matter with so many parties that would require close of pleadings. And the close of pleadings means that all the responses must be given. So that my Lord, as far as today is concerned, I urge you respectfully that the first thing that can ensure we are moving forward is to ensure that the responses in accordance with the Mutunga rules will complete that journey. But Lord, if that is done, it is my view that uh, we will be able to make some progress. In the meantime, my Lord, unless there is any other matter, because there was no other matter that was to be dealt with except directions, we would be happy to leave this place as soon as possible so that we are ready in the afternoon. We are most of them. Just briefly, I think my thing, because I'm going to speak to you, so you can have some response on it. In your worship, um, for purposes of clarity and for purposes of not addressing the gallery anymore, permit me to draw the attention of counsel for the Senate to the notice of motion that was filed in respect to the conservatory orders that were granted. The judge sitting in Kyoga Yonoshi was categorical that he granted prayer number three. Even as we await senior counsel Paul Mwede to come in the afternoon, the wording of those prayers was so explicit that if my good professor had the opportunity of interacting with the document, which I believe he has not, would have come to the conclusion that the orders were drafted in this manner. That pending, that pending the hearing and termination, that pending the hearing and termination of this application inter parties, this honorable court be pleased to grant the order that were granted. That is therefore to mean your lordship that question that senior counsel was raising has no seating in the pleadings before you. Number two, your lordship. Since we are here for mention and in the afternoon we are coming for the application for recusal. And I've had the advocates for the respondents insisting on the urgency to hear the application for setting aside. Your Lordship, it is important for the court to note that that application is not predicated on any response. And therefore, if I were there, I would be seeking guidance on how to file the replies. Your Lordship, I hope you are following. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't seem to be following. <laughs> Why do you say that? <laughs> but, Why do you say that? <laughs> but, but you need to blame me at that. Thank you. I, I think that is. Sorry, I don't talk for that. On a very small issue, we do confirm that the. Uh, for His Excellency, the Deputy President, Gary Ashagwa, as the petitioner, we have not received responses from the respondents. So it is important that first of all we get directions for filing of responses, because as we speak now, we have not received those responses from the respondents. Then number two, uh, my colleague Senior uh, Kibe has raised issues on filing of uh, responses, so that in 522, we have given an indication that we might require to amend our pleadings. So that in, before the ruling that was delivered by this bench, there was indication that we might require to amend the pleading. That is in petitions in cohort number one. So that if the court can grant us leave within three days, those amendments can be done. And thereafter, this can also probably affect its petitions, cohort number two. So it is important that we get that particular direction. Finally, my lord, the, this proceeding, because of the nature, uh, the way they are proceeding, would request that probably we be provided with. Sorry, the Sequentially, they trans transcribe the proceeding so that in case we require the proceeding at any time, those can be available uh, for purposes of good order. That, that is all. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah, uh, with due respect to counsel, 
we do not intend to make today this hearing a long hearing. We have been cautious enough, we have read our directions, and I think you should let us wait for proceedings in the afternoon. Yes. Sir, I have something to say. Number one, the petitioners cannot approbate and reprobate at the same time. They are calling upon the respondents to file their responses. Then at the same time, they are seeking leave to amend the petitions. How would the petitions that are to be amended be responded to when actually it should be amendments that should come first and then responses follow? Two, it brought to the attention of the petitioners that the interim order, one of the interim orders expires today, and the other one is the one we are complaining about, but it is actually aggrieving the respondents that should be set aside the lawyer order. Therefore, we shall be delving into that as soon as it is practicable. And number three, uh, the reason why we are here and from the day before yesterday is due to the applications that were filed on the 18th of October to set aside the expertive and conservative <coughs> orders. Therefore, that agency cannot be lost or cannot be clouded in whatever else they are saying. It is our position that we should actually proceed and be heard on why those conservatory orders should be set aside. Thank you. I apologize to the many issues. I do apologize. I'm very happy to your question. Uh, when I made an application for the court, I said, let me enjoy it. My Lord, Justice Kampora, you are very kind. Now, you probably are asking me to do so. The court is here, I was to be done. And all time, I was to be done by the museum. Uh, you have not mentioned if you would be kind enough in which petition? Yeah. In which one? Uh, the, 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 oh, which which cohort? This uh, I'm sorry, I don't have paper, but this one is for the court. Well, in, the, in, the, uh, in your own name. Yeah, in my own name. Uh, John M. And the court is to have been done. So you are a petitioner number eight? No. No. The interested party number eight. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, my lord. Uh, we just want to restate the position that the agency in this matter cannot be gainsaid or cannot be lost at all. <coughs> Under the contention that the replies have not been made, that we have not made the replies, is not correct because we have filed our responses. And my lord, at the end of the day, the very essence that led to the embarrassment of these uh, of these uh, uh, judges will actually be lost because then we will be going back and forth, and at the end of the day, my lord, we will not have uh, served the public, the greater public interest or the greater public good that led to the embarrassment, which you made a determination yesterday, my lord. We would ask that we be able to proceed and argue this matter conclusively and rest it once and for all. Thank you. We are no longer accepting any further submissions. I'm saying this that it is not for court to direct parties when to respond to pleadings. It is not for court to direct parties when to respond to pleadings. But one thing which I can assure you that this bench will not allow anybody to get the process of court in circles. So if you have been served the document, whether petition or an application, if you don't respond, the court is in, uh, is allowed to infer that you have no response. If a petition has been filed and you have not responded to it, the court will make inference that you have no response to that petition. And uh, by the very nature of these proceedings, we have all acknowledged that they are public interest proceedings. No party will be allowed to take the court in circle. So I ask you, respond to the pleadings, file your petitions, respond to them, don't come and ask for deal in a manner to suggest 
that you wanted this court in circles. We need to do that. Thank you. 